Get in the zone. On the zone. The top zone. <laughs> Yo, I look so gross. No, you don't. Wheelchair? Wheelchair. <laughs> Hello. Again. Good evening. <laughs> it's us again. Just us. And we're back at ya to talk about <laughs> dating <laughs> again. And there are reasons for this. The big I can't get over how gross I look. Everyone remember they're like, where's the hot one? We want Allie. Ew. And you got her. Okay. Okay. But anyway, I made a blog about dating and then someone posted that they asked if I date able-bodied people and people in wheelchairs or just able-bodied people or whatever. And I get asked that a lot. Yeah, so they asked that and then someone got upset about the person asking that. Um, and that kind of uh, pulled at me because a lot of times it's like, like, okay, if we're going to the mall and then people are staring at us and um, we're used to it, well, it doesn't really upset me anymore. Does it upset you? Wait, when people ask you? Like, when people stare at you when you go places. I mean, no, if you, like, are, like, staring at me for a long time. Like, don't give me a dirty look. <laughs> yeah, so. Um, I'm used to it, I guess. I am. But then, like, my family or friends will be the ones that get upset and they're like, everyone's staring at you. and Yeah. And then I'm like, okay, you're the one who's actually making this, like, kind of making it a big deal when it's just ignore it, or they just are looking because they don't understand. So, the fact that the person got kind of upset that the other person asked if I date people able-bodied and in wheelchairs, I wanted to make a video to explain that it's a normal question and um, something that, like, a lot of people wonder. So... We're gonna answer it now. Okay. Do you wanna start? You can start. Oh. Um, well, I definitely, like, yeah, it would be easier if the person I was dating was able bodied because I'm in a wheelchair, so that makes it hard. And that's putting two wheelchairs into the car and two chairs out and, you know, carrying the garbage out. There's a lot of things that are complicated because we're both in wheelchairs. But, um,. At the same time, like, I, it's hard enough to find someone that you have chemistry with, and, um, if I find that, it doesn't matter who it is, and I'm definitely, I've dated guys in wheelchairs, and I've dated able-bodied guys since my accident, and it doesn't matter to me, um, yeah, so, that's one answer, yeah, <laughs> um, I never dated a guy in a wheelchair, but would you? But would I? I mean, I, I wouldn't be like, no. It definitely would make things like harder and, I don't know. Because you're in a wheelchair. Well, I'm in a wheelchair, yeah, I'm in a wheelchair too. I'm not trying to be mean, but it's like, it's reality. It's reality, so. But you can't help who you fall in love with. You can't help who you fall in love with. Yeah, that's right. My aunt said the other day. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So that's like, it's not, um, it's not ridiculous to ask a question like that, and it's a normal thought process to, right? like, yeah, life is easier when you're not in a wheelchair, and we know that, and it's, it's hard for us, because we know that people think that way, too, about dating us, um, and that's okay, I mean, yeah. that's how you want to think, like, I probably, before my accident, I wouldn't have jumped on the bandwagon to say I would have, it didn't even cross my mind. And I probably didn't really know anyone. You didn't know anyone, and I'm pretty sure guys who dated us who aren't in wheelchairs never thought they'd be dating a girl in a wheelchair. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's so. actually what I've been told a lot. You know, I'm usually the first person in a wheelchair that the guy I've dated has dated. Yeah. Um. So then we're gonna go. We're gonna talk about our experiences dating. Oh, yeah, dating people in wheels like when when we date able-bodied guys and um some of our. Ex our bad and good experiences. So when I first got in my accident, like I remember telling 
um, I was 18 and I was going to physical therapy and I told the physical therapist that I think it's a good thing because now I'm gonna meet a really good guy because only a good guy is gonna want to be with me since I'm in a wheelchair and I was really really naive like I really thought the bad guys wouldn't give me the time of day and just a guy would see me and be like she's so strong like I know I can only imagine what she's you know going through and she gets up every day and like fights hard and during that time like so I really thought the and, and so I was naive and um, had blinders on so then and, and I remember the physical therapist kind of looking at me like okay crazy girl because <laughs> uh, I was like pumped about it I was like yeah <laughs> trying to be positive and then three well like the summer after my accident so it was like no it was like six months later um, I was at this barbecue and my friend was with me and he kept carrying me to the bathroom because um, I was drinking beer so I was peeing a lot and um, in my wheelchair it was like rough terrain so he was carrying me to the bathroom constantly and then this guy I noticed was staring at me across the lawn he was like barbecuing and he kept smiling and I was like oh and, and I was still pretty insecure and you know thinking only a good guy is gonna want me um, and then he came over and he asked if he could carry me to the bathroom and I was like, what? And I was like, heck yeah. And I thought it was kind of like knight in shining armor type of thing. <laughs> and so I was pumped about that. And then he, you know, brought me food and like brought a napkin over to me. And when you're kind of like sitting there and you can't get up and, you know, it can be overwhelming. But when someone just does one thing that you really needed, it makes you feel so good. And so then we went to the movies and we hung out after that. And when he's putting my chair in and out of his car, I always felt like I was a burden to everyone and that it was, you know, just a lot of baggage. And so as he was putting my chair into the car, I was just thinking like, wow, this guy must really like me, you know, and um, I, I was honestly thinking like, he could be the one, like, uh, so I fell for a major trick and I remember telling him that this just seems too good to be true. And the other thing was that I kind of had a drinking problem, a bit. <laughs> We're bringing some real dark stuff into this. Okay, so I was drinking a lot because everyone after high school was partying if they didn't go off to college, and if they're going off to college, they're partying there. So, um, yeah, so everyone was partying, and I was really lost and really sad, and when I would go to the parties, uh, I would just like drink and you know I'm sitting so I'm not moving around the alcohol doesn't really hit me the same and I just I'm so sad and I just want to be like normal like everyone else I want to be like social and carefree and um, and just have fun so I was trying to just drink until I could loosen up but instead I would drink and since I was sitting I would eventually just black out and <laughs> and then you know, I would try and pretend like, uh, like, oh, I don't care, like, haha, you know, I'm just waddling around or I'm using my wheelchair and I'm strong and g gonna overcome this. And everyone would be like, you're such a badass, you know. And, and instead of being like, dude, do you, do you need some help? Are you okay? You know, when I'm just like drinking like crazy. And then I'd black out, and then I would come out of my blackout crying my eyes out to someone and telling them how hard it was. And um, and so this happened with this guy that I was dating, because we would go out to parties, and then I remember coming out of the blackout and telling him, crying to him and telling him that I don't want to live anymore and that this is just so hard and I'm so sad. And so he knew that I was really struggling, and um, that's the part that makes it, like, Kind of the most messed up like I had just become paralyzed it was like six months into losing my ability to walk and this guy was completely taking advantage of me um, you know I kind of felt pressured to do things that really I wouldn't have wanted to do like that soon after like meeting someone but because he was putting my chair in and out of his car and you know doing all of these things that I felt like was I was a burden it made me feel like I kind of owed him, and honestly, he kind of made me feel on, like I owed him. So, um, so anyway, he knew. And then one day, um, after telling him this just seems too good to be true, and him saying, "Oh, don't think that," then um, I get a call.
call from his ex who leaves a voicemail and says that um, I'm just a crippled punk <laughs> and that um, he makes fun of me all the time and that I'm nothing but a dumb girl in a wheelchair and that I think I'm someone but I'm nothing and that him and all of his friends make fun of me and um, and that he's still sleeping with her and this all this crazy stuff. Like literally left a voicemail. Um, and my dad, I was at home and my dad listened to it with me and he got so angry about it and I just felt like my heart dropped and just, I was so numb all of a sudden because it was just like I had no idea that people could be that cruel where, you know, you're already going through so much and they know that you're barely hanging on and yet they'll just use you like a rag doll and kick you while you're down. Um, so then I called him and he answers and it's obvious that he's right next to her and he goes, I was like, I was like, what is, what is wrong? Like, what is going on? What is wrong with you? And he's like, yeah, like, I'm going to have to ask you not to call me anymore. Yeah. And I was like, what the hell? And then he just hung up. And that was like my first experience of dating after my accident. Um, and, and you know what's crazy is that I even like forgave her. I didn't really, I didn't know her, but I remember like, Somehow we ended up talking on the phone like I don't know a few weeks later maybe a month or something and I just told her that you know he's not a good person and I hope that she can find the strength to like realize that and you know be a better person herself um, and that she should go get checked <laughs> because he's obviously yeah um, so that was my first experience and then I dated an, a guy who was an alcoholic um, because I couldn't help myself and I put all of my energy into trying to help someone else. Um, and that was a complete mess. That was like two years. Um, cause I really believed in him and, you know, knew he could be better than what he was doing. But honestly it was because it was a toxic relationship because I was so unhealthy in my own mind. Um, and just didn't want to think about my own problems. So I clung on to someone else and tried to save them, you know, um, so luckily that ended when I went to college, and then I dated a guy while I was in college, and he had his own insecurities and things going on, um, he was really cute, and he was sweet and funny, and we had, you know, we laughed all the time when we were together, um, but then he wouldn't bring me to his baseball games, and I always had this really bad feeling, and um, I would, like, you know, I, my depression in general, like, I cried a lot, so when he would make up weird excuses as to why, like, you know, he just couldn't pick me up in time or, you know, whatever, I didn't have my car at the time on campus, and uh, I just knew deep down that he wasn't bringing me to his baseball games because he was embarrassed that I was in a wheelchair, and everyone, you know, always tells you, you can't think like that, or it's probably just in your head, or, you know, no, people don't think that way, and, but... I mean, we know the reality, like, yeah, they do, um, and that is exactly what was going on, so I tried to keep brushing it aside and be like, no, he really just, you know, he didn't have time, or he, I don't know, whatever excuses, and he played, like, three games a week, like, it was crazy, and every time I knew that, like, he wasn't bringing me because I'm in a wheelchair and he's embarrassed and doesn't want to be seen you know, dating a girl in a wheelchair because his ex played on another team and he wasn't over her and didn't want her to know that he was dating a girl in a wheelchair. So when we finally broke up, um, I broke up with him and I went to counseling like the following fall. So that was in spring. And the counselor told me that I should just ask him, like call him up and ask him if that was the reason. And so I asked him to meet me for coffee, and he did, and as soon as he showed up, I was just like, why didn't you bring me to your baseball games? And he was like, what? And like smiled and was kind of like, you know, all nervous. And I was like, did you not bring me because, what, you weren't over your ex and you wanted your back? And I knew that wasn't, that was part of the reason, but he's like, no, and that I, because I didn't want her to judge me. And I was like, judge you because I'm in a wheelchair. And he's like, no, and I was like, 
there's no other reason why you would, you know, not want her to judge you. Like, I know that I'm attractive and I'm, I'm, you know, I'm a cool girl. Like, it, it's because I'm in a wheelchair. And he was like, okay, yeah. And, and he's like, but I know I was stupid. So anyway, in the long run, like, he, he grew up a lot and worked through his own issues. And I forgave him because people are insecure and, yeah, it hurt me bad. It was really hard. After he told me the truth, every, you know, going to class every day for the next, like, three weeks, um, I was just in a, like, in a hole, and I would look and look at my reflection in the window and just think, like, how am I, he was a FedEx driver, too, on campus, and I was like, if he drives by, you know, you want to be like, oh, I'm just going to go out there, and I'm going to look good, and I'm going to feel good, and I'm, um, but to me, it was like, it doesn't matter what you do because you're in a wheelchair and that's all he sees and you're not going to ever feel good about yourself. You know, like he just, you know, that. so looking at myself in the reflection, I just kept seeing like just the wheelchair, the wheelchair. And I had to find a way to like gain enough strength to hold my head up again and somehow rise above that. And I did, I just started realizing like all these, my amazing teammates and, um, just the awesome people I have in my life and the people who don't give up, you know, about what others think. And, um, and I just got to the point where it's like, it's his loss. And I, he had, you know, you just have to understand people are going through their own things and it can be kind of ignorant. And, um, so I, I gained a lot of strength from it, but it was hard. It was really hard. Um, so those were like my big, you know, I have one more, but I'm not even going to go into that. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so, yeah, people definitely judge and have a hard time with the whole wheelchair thing, but, um, but I'm open to dating whether you're in a wheelchair or whether you're not, um, but I also understand all the dynamics that go into it, and, um, yeah. Your turn. I don't really know what to say because I feel like yours is so mine. I don't know. Well, there's. A, I mean, you just go, and then if you don't bring up what you told me that one time, then I'll remind yeah. you. Yeah. Uh, Patrick. Guy. Yeah. Who's it? Saying he just couldn't get. Who? Can't get into the whole wheelchair thing. Who? I, don't I never know. dated a serious guy. No, you didn't date him. It was, was just like you kind of. Yeah. He yeah. something like that. You didn't really tell me. Yeah, there was just one time I had two high school friends that are were Jesse and Nina. Um, they were very protective of me, and this one guy at a party, which was like the only negative thing. He was like, "You're really pretty, but you're in a wheelchair." And my friend Jesse, who was like my older brother throughout high school and everything, he kicked him out. He was like, "Get out of my house! How dare you say that to her?" So he's like one of those guys who's just kind of like a douche. I thought you said he said you're really pretty, but I just I can't get into the whole wheelchair thing. No, because we had like, I just saw him at a party and I was like, hi, and he's like, you're really pretty, but you're just like, you're in a wheelchair. I was like, okay. And Jesse was like, all right, you're out. Because I told him, I was like, this is what he said to me. <laughs> but I was just, I wasn't sad. I was just like, I thought it was funny at that point. So I was like, yeah. Um, I mean, I dated a guy from high school before my accident um, and after my accident for like five, I don't know, I don't know, for a long time. So, I was very <laughs> comfortable with him, and then after we broke up, I did, it was hard for me to, like, get back into dating, because you just share so much with somebody over five years, and then going through your accident, like, you're very, you're comfortable with that person, and, um, but I was lucky enough that I transferred to Jefferson, so I was able to be in the city and meet a lot of new guys, and, um, they were all, like, really driven, and. They were like really good. I met a lot of good guys and dated a lot of good people and it kind of just showed me what I wanted um, out of a relationship. But I think the only thing I've found with guys sometimes is that they like taking care of you. Like I, I dated one guy who just like, he's like, I just love carrying you around. And I was like, okay, like, like he just wants to be like the knight in shining armor. And I was like, you don't really have to be that <laughs> for me. Um, but it was good just cause it got me out of my comfort zone and um, made me see that guys do like me. Cause after my after like my high school re relationship, I was like, no one's gonna like me as much as he did or like accept 
me, and he knew everything about my accident and injury because he was obviously we were dating when it happened. But then, yeah, I have I dated a lot of really good guys since then. I mean, obviously it didn't work out with them, but for their own reasons, it didn't work out. Um, I dated a guy for a couple months over the summer, but I think and I he, he lost his mom. And I think that's why he like date like dating me because he was able to like relive taking care of his mom and like mm -hmm. take care by taking care of me. Not not saying he took care of me, but like he like again loved like yeah. carrying me upstairs and like his dad would help and like I think he's like a part of that like he used to do with his mom before she passed away and like he was able to get some of that back with me and we talked about that <coughs> and we kind of agreed, but he was. Um, he was a good guy too. Like I, I don't know. I don't. I, yeah, you sound like a mess compared to you. No, I just don't. I just. I was in a rough, uh, crowd and mindset and everything. So I've had a lot to like work through, but I definitely feel like I wouldn't settle for anything less than no. you know, someone that treats me good. And I know, you know right and wrong now and I know I definitely like I'm way stronger so thanks so you can't compare yourself you can't compare I just feel like I it did I remember though when I dated Brandon who was my high school boyfriend like after my accident we would like go out to dinner and I was like I don't want to go to the bathroom like do you need to use the bathroom because I'm gonna go to the bathroom he like he would get so frustrated me he'd be like just go to the bathroom I'd be like everyone's gonna be like staring at me like I don't want to or like what if I can't open the door by myself and he was like just go you're fine and he like really pushed me to like I mean we would fight about it and stuff and I don't think he completely got all the insecurities I was going through in that time mm -hmm. but I think I was in high school and then I think the best decision is I went far away to college and like created new relationships and kind of like found myself without having him around even we were still dating when I was in Pittsburgh but um, I was able just to kind of get that independence away from him and then going to Jefferson and just meeting new people and like being in such a supportive program too like was just awesome and like awesome and all the guys I dated at Jefferson 90% of them were med students or PTs so they kind of were like fascinated by me mm -hmm. so I think they were more like well and they got it too, and they got they it studied less but. right so it was like so I think I was really lucky with that, but yeah, I think a lot of people in wheelchairs end up dating like their rec therapist or their physical therapist or their nurse or really yeah, that's kind of what I've noticed. The majority of like usually it's guys though, guys that like end up with their therapist or their nurse or. Well, what about like when you guys went out to the bar and said that you like you were comparing yourself to the ill body girls? Oh, I mean, it still sucks when you go out to the bar and you're dating someone and you see all these pretty girls and they're all dancing around. It's like, dang. But they're nice, but. That used to be me. But. Yeah. It, and I think that's just something you have to accept and it's always just going to be there. But there will always be someone smarter, someone prettier, and everybody deals with that. But I mean, it's hard in the moment because you get frustrated. Not frustrated, but you're like the jealousy. But I think when you let the jealousy in, it just makes you even more bitter and and energetic. And I feel like whenever I had those bad feelings, I end up talking to the girl, and then we end up like becoming friends. And I'm like, why? Like it's mm -hmm. silly. So yeah, yeah. You know. Like when you're able bodied, you compare yourself to other girls, and then you know, like being in a relationship is like a whole other world for me because that stuff doesn't bother me when I'm single. Like I don't. I don't really compare myself to able-bodied girls or, you know, I just, uh, like, I, you know, I just don't, I mean, I kind of, you know, with the whole Allie having such a great career, I can, I've been like, ugh, because I'm going through a hard time, but, um, but when I'm in a relationship, then I become, like, you know, just so insecure. I don't, I don't know now, I have worked through a lot, and I just haven't been in a healthy relationship, so I don't really know what it feels like to be in a relationship where someone, I don't know, actually really cares about you and wants to be with you. So I don't know what that's like, <laughs> but 
pretty sure. You know, I had it in high school. <laughs> um, but yeah, so it's kind of nice not being in a relationship for me because then I don't have to like deal with that whirlwind. Um, of, yeah, but at the same time, relationships just they help push you and um, you grow so much. So that's always awesome too. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. Let's talk another 20 minute video. Maybe a little bit longer. I can't see the timer. I think it's like 19 and then adding the other one. Yeah. We'll be like. There we go. What? <laughs> okay. Okay. Cool. We'll be in. Break. Goodbye. Thank you.